Welcome back. In video number eight, I've shown you how to input data in your Django application using the front end. And this is the form that we used. It's not the prettiest, not very bad, but I'm going to show you how to transform this form into this. All right. So this is a much better looking form. And this is what you want to give to your application users. All right. So we're going to have the invoice date here. You have the invoice number. You're going to have your customer name. The customer phone number and you're gonna have all the line items right in here so line one with its quantity the unit price and then the line total you have line two and it'll be like that all the way up to the last line so which we're gonna look at in the future videos but in this video this is what we want to accomplish I'm sure you're gonna be excited with this current look of our form and we'll be using crispy forms and it's going to be an advanced rendering of crispy forms i've never shown this on my channel and this is the first time we're doing this and i'm excited about this new rendering of forms using django crispy forms right so it's as usual all the codes will be right here on the website and they're just five simple steps yeah five simple steps great so to start we're gonna um install crispy forms okay we're gonna go to the terminal and install crispy forms all right so i'm gonna switch to the terminal i'm gonna stop the server and then install crispy forms all right so we're gonna do pip install yango dash crispy dash forms I've already installed that it says requirements already satisfied okay so that's gonna be the first step that is step number one and next is to add crispy forms to your install apps so I'm gonna open settings.py we can be found right in the project folder okay so I'm gonna scroll down to install apps and I'm gonna put a comma here and we're gonna add crispy forms to it save it and then move to another step under the same um, settings the py file we're gonna have crispy template packs we're gonna be using bootstrap 4 so this is what we're gonna be using to style our crispy forms okay so crispy works hand in hand with bootstrap and right down here I'm gonna add the crispy template pack so we're gonna be adding crispy template packs and we'll be using bootstrap 4 we're gonna save it and then move to step number three all right so we're gonna be loading the static files and the crispy form tags on the template this is not really required all we needed is the crispy form tags but what i want to do is we wanted to do some a little bit of styling on the entry page so that's why i'm loading the static files as well okay so i'm gonna use these two codes the load static and then the load crispy form tags all right i'm going to copy this and paste it in the entry form okay right above all the codes i'm going to paste it here so this is what we need to uh customize our application or the forms using crispy form tags now from here if i save it and i use uh if i use pipe symbol here and i type crispy so we're gonna be loading uh, the form in a crispy format and I'm gonna refresh here all right we need to run the server we're gonna do refresh again okay so you can see the form looks a little bit um, better like if I turn off crispy if I remove the crispy forms right here save it and refresh the page so this is what we have previously okay now if i add crispy to the forms if i refresh we have it in a top-down form good so now we needed to add bootstrap to the page so that it will be styled how we want it or at least the bootstrap styling will be applied to this page okay so let's do that next i have the code right here as well so we're going to link the bootstrap cdn that's what that's what we did in the previous video and we also looked at how to add the static files in the templates okay so i've already shown that in our previous videos in this current series so i'm going to copy both codes 
and paste it right here in the header tag okay I'm gonna save it and then do a refresh okay so we can see some styling have been applied on this on your application you might have this stretching all the way up to the end right here if I don't forget I added this column dash sm dash 6 right here that is cutting it down to the half of the page so so originally it was like this if I refresh on your application it might be looking like how I have it right here okay now I added this div class and I use the columns and limit it to just six okay so that means I want to use half of the page for this form okay so the div class started here and ended right here so the submit button is also part of that column so if I refresh the page you have it as half of our page okay now this is not how we want the form to be rendered okay great but before we get to that what I would do is um, yeah let's just continue because I wanted to just uh, create some padding right here but I'll do that last okay now let's continue on this video I'm gonna get back to the codes so the next step is to style our form okay now uh, I'm gonna copy the entire code and then explain how it works So I'm gonna replace the entire form. So this is the form right here, from here all the way down here. So I'm gonna replace the entire form. Now on our application, I'm gonna, let me just do this. I'm gonna change the view um, layout. I'm gonna use a single layout so that's easy to read. Right, so this is what I'm gonna replace all the way from form to form. I'm gonna replace that great so now um, I'm gonna save it and then refresh the page good now um, let me explain how I did this okay this is um, a row from here all the way down here is a row so now in the first row you have uh, the invoice date invoice number customer name phone number in one row okay so in that row we have two columns so the first column has invoice date and then uh, you have the customer name in the first column right in the second column you have invoice number and phone number so this is what I did exactly right here okay so I used bootstrap rules and column to accomplish this like I showed you in the previous video that is just the video I released before this one okay that is video number 11 sorry video number 12 now um, I created a row the row starts from here and then ended here so within that row I created two columns okay so the first column is here and it is using uh, six that means half of that space it is within a, a column that takes six that means half of the page so if you look at the entire page we have a big row that takes uh, the entire um, width of the page and we cut it into two that means we're gonna use just half of that page that is the first row or the first column okay now if I switch back to the code that is this one right here we created a column that is wrapping the entire form okay from there all the way down here okay so that is taking half of the page so within that half within the half that we have right here is where I'm gonna create another column okay but before creating this column we're gonna define it in a row so the row defines what we can put in that row okay now the row starts here so it starts here and ended right here so I'm gonna give it a space so they see exactly what is going on here right so this is the first row okay and we have another row but before I get to that I'm gonna explain this part so in this row we have two columns okay I'm gonna separate these ones as well the first row has two columns the first column is right here and it's, it takes half of that row okay and then we have the second column that takes another half of this row so in the first column we have the invoice date okay as crispy fill I hope you get that okay we have the invoice date 
form dot invoice date pipe symbol as underscore crispy underscore fields okay so this is how to define that this field should be used as crispy or crispy should be applied to this field now because we put it in a column that is taking half of whatever the row is okay so it's gonna use just half of that so that is this invoice date right here okay so we have the invoice date and then the form name okay the name field great so these two will be in column one and then you have these two in column two okay I'm gonna cut out all of this so they see exactly what is going on save it refresh so you can see we have two columns okay the first column is right here the second column is right here so I'm gonna move to the next step I'm gonna undo so now we replicated the same okay we created another row that is here okay so within that row we had four columns the first column is right here I'm gonna give it a space so that you can differentiate them another column is right here okay so we have column in one row we have a column one column two column three column four okay so the first column took half of that row remember the row is taking half of the page okay because of this six right here so in that row we give half of that row to this field okay the line one field okay we are left with six if we take six out of 12 of this row okay the entire row is 12 if we take six that means we are left with six so the other six is divided into three we have two another two that's making it four another two making it six okay so six plus another six will make it 12 so that will fill the entire row and that is this row right here so now if i switch to the application you're gonna see line one is gonna take half of whatever the row is and then we have uh the line one quantity you have line one unit price and line one total if i switch it this way so that we can see both codes on the page refresh this page right here oh i've supposed to save this refresh in the first column we have the line one field okay the field called line one that is this here and it's going to take half of the row so the row starts from here all the way down here so we give half of that row to this field line one okay we created another column okay gave it two okay and then we have line one quantity that is this here line one unit price you have it right here line one total price that is what we have right here and then we move to another row so this is the first row okay we have the second row and then the third row is here in that third row we have first row second row and then third row right here all the way down here okay so that is the third row in that third row we repeated what we have in the second row okay but for line two okay and then you have line two quantity you have line two here line two quantity line two unit price and then line two total so that's what we have here exactly what we have in the second row okay first row remember first row second row third row all right now we have another row again and in that row that starts from here all the way down here okay we have a column that takes the entire space okay and then we use another one that is this one right here okay that is this two invoice type and total okay so because we gave 12 to this it took the entire row so this one's supposed to be in the same row with this but this because this one took 12 it doesn't have the total doesn't have any more space so it has to automatically come down right here okay so this seems as two separate rows but actually it is in one row but because it is taking the entire space okay the invoice type is taking the entire space that is this 12 right here it doesn't give any room for the total so the total have to come down here okay 
and now we have our button here I hope you get that okay so if you refresh the page you have exactly like this okay so what is important here is to know how to do the rows and columns now to define that this form or this field should be using crispy you're gonna do form dot line one or the form dot the field name pipe as underscore crispy underscore field I hope you get that okay so this is what I want to show you in this video and I hope you find this informative if you enjoyed this video don't forget to click on the thumbs up subscribe if this is the first video I've not subscribed yet but before we go I wanted to style this form so that we have a padding right here okay I'm gonna go to the CSS okay I'm gonna create okay we already have the form or the class right here okay I've created a class my form so this is what I'm gonna style so my form is what is wrapping the entire form okay so from here my form starts here let me just tap this okay I'm gonna tap it in a bit I'm gonna tap the whole div okay we already have a tab here so I'm gonna tap this side as well great so this is the div that I wanna give uh, some style to okay now if I come here I'm gonna say that my form okay we're gonna give it a margin okay I'm gonna give it 30 px and refresh great so this is what I want to show you when I just create a space around the form okay so that it doesn't get too close to the edge of the screen so I hope you find this video informative if you do don't forget to click on that like button and if you are new to this channel or you've not subscribed yet you enjoy videos about programming I'll invite you to click on that subscribe button so that you will not miss our future videos see you in the next video